What's up everybody, Fetter here from 3D Print SOS. So I watched Thomas Sandladder's review of the Voxlab Aquila 3D printer and he not only made me really hungry, but he also found a major issue that's plaguing these printers currently in their firmware. What he found is that if the thermistor, which is a little probe that's installed on your hot end that monitors the temperature of these machines, if that probe gets dislodged or broken or disconnected or it shorts, your firmware potentially freezes up but continues to heat the hot end, creating a thermal runaway, AKA a fire hazard. So that is an obvious issue and VoxLab did say that they're going to be fixing this as soon as they can via firmware. But in the meantime, if you have one of these machines, I highly urge you to update your firmware to a third party. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do that. You're gonna need your SD card and you're gonna to have to figure out which machine you have. For example, right over here, I have a Voxlab Aquila X2 and on it is a sticker that says N32. And that's going to have to be the firmware that I get for this machine. However, for this machine right over here, my original Aquila, it doesn't have a sticker. So for that, I'm going to have to get a G32 uh, firmware. So I'm gonna grab the SD card Let's go ahead to the computer and I'll show you where to download and how to install this on your 3D printer. All right, so we're at the computer. I went ahead and plugged in my SD card with a reader into my machine. So we're gonna have to go to a website called GitHub and on it, I'll include a link in my description where you can get to Alex's uh, version of the firmware. The reason why I'm going with Alex's is because he just seems to have many updates and constantly updating the latest ones from eight days ago. So uh, that's why we're going with this one. There are other options out there. I suggest you guys take a look at them, see which features you like, which you don't like and make the decision yourself. But this is generally gonna be the same way to do it. I actually wanna take a second to thank both Gyres, who's the original person that made uh, this firmware for the Ender 3 uh, V2 and for Alex for making a fork for the Aquila, making it really easy for all of us to reap the benefits of his hard work. So thank you for that. Essentially, what you want to do is head to this website and uh, here you can see the latest version, everything that was included in there. And here below it, you can see all these bin files. The bin files are the actual firmware that you're going to need. As you can see here, there's a lot of BL Touch options. Uh, if you have a BL Touch or want to install a BL Touch, you're going to have to use one of these firmwares. I'm going to stick with manual mesh. You can go ahead and do the default as well. But here I'm going to grab the manual mesh 3x3 G32 bin. This is going to be from my original Aquila for this video. I'm gonna go ahead and download that. The other thing that you're gonna need from here is actually the source code zip file. From the source, source code, we're gonna go ahead and get the DWIN files. That's gonna be for the screen. Both have to be updated, updated the firmware on the machine and the screen itself. So now that that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this. And uh, here we have pulled up our SD card for, for uh, the actual Aquila. So we have to do a couple things. First, if you wanna keep all of the files on your SD card, I like to make a folder. I'm gonna name it SD. I'm gonna take everything from here and I'm gonna drag it into this folder and let it copy over. Essentially, when all this is done, we, we can just copy everything back to this folder, um, back to the SD card from this folder and have all of our files intact as if we never did anything. But what you need to do is you need to right click on the SD card. We're gonna to go to format. I'm going to make sure the allocation unit size is at 4,096 bytes. This is important for the printer to know what to do. So I'm gonna get hit start. It's gonna say that it's gonna erase everything on the SD card, and this should be done really quickly. Format completed. All right, so the next step here is to pull the files out of the Marlin zip file that we uh, got. I like to right click and hit extract here. This is because I have WinRAR installed. By the way, WinRAR uh, has to, uh, makes it really easy to get zip files unzipped. So I'm gonna hit extract here. And uh, as it's finishing, we have a folder here with the whole Marlin build. When you click into here, uh, you can go to display firmware and then to firmware sets. There's other options for you. There's uh, tools included to make your own icons, to change the colors however you want them, to make them custom if you wanted. There's even icon packs already pre-made if you wanna compile them yourself. But if you go to firmware sets, these are already uh, pre-enabled for you. And essentially what's in here is this file right here, the number nine is an icon file with all the icons already predetermined and pre-made in there. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab this VoxLab Red. So to keep everything intact, I'm just gonna copy it we'll put it on our desktop. Let's move this out of the way. 
So essentially we have these two files. Now here's the bin file. What we need to do for the bin file is we need to make a new folder, name it firmware lowercase and put this into that uh, folder. Uh, now the printer is going to know what to do with the bin file. Now for the uh, display to know what to do with this D1 set, we actually need to rename it just D1 underscore set in all caps, just like this. So both of these files can be put on your uh, SD card. So let's go ahead and open that back up. The SD card should be empty. We're gonna go ahead and put both of those on there and we're gonna go ahead and hit eject. So now all of that is on the SD card and we're ready to head to the printer. All right, I'll see you there. So the first thing we wanna do is make sure the machine is powered off and let's go ahead and put in our SD card. There we go. Okay, so now that the SD card is in, let's go ahead and turn the machine on. And it is going to install the firmware. So be prepared for the screen to do a couple things. In this case, it needs to turn colors when it's complete. Here you can see a bar, a loading screen, and we're waiting for a check mark. There you go, that check mark means the firmware is complete. And don't worry about the screen looking crazy, that is because the screen doesn't have the proper graphics installed yet. So that's the next step. So now that you see this, we can go ahead and turn the printer off. And now we go on to the next step, which is taking the, uh, the display up off and apart onto the back to get access to the SD card on the back of the display. Let me show you how to do that. Okay, so here we have the back of the uh, screen and what we're looking for is this slot right over here and we need that SD card. So with the printer off, we're gonna go ahead and take the SD card that was in the printer and we are going to install it into the bottom of the display, just like that. And it should click in just like that, uh, right in the display. And we're gonna go ahead and plug it in just like this, let's set it down. And yes, it is going to be displayed in a different format. It's going to be horizontal now. I mean, a vertical now instead of horizontal. Let's go ahead and turn the machine on. And we're going to be looking for the screen to do a couple things. It is uh, going to turn blue and then hopefully orange, which will mean that everything that we need is installed. There we go. So now, we need to turn the machine back off. We can wait for it to fully turn off here. Remove the SD card. You don't wanna install this back into the machine because it will try to reinstall the firmware. So we need to go back to the computer at some point, remove everything on here and put those files back on so we can get everything back. But for now, you should be able to turn on your machine and have the updated firmware. There you go, and the Aquila is ready and you have a fully featured and protected machine with lots of settings to play with. And uh, let me know if you, in the comments below if you want me to feature anything particular about the software. There is a lot to digest. But first, let me go ahead and put this back together real quick. All right guys, so as you can see, it is that easy to install firmware on these machines. The only thing you're going to need is a different mount. My horizontal tuck mount will no longer work because the screen now has to be vertical. But I just wanna say thanks, Tom, for bringing you know, attention uh, to this issue. It is only going to make these printers even better. And thank you to Gyres and Alex for making it really easy for us to install and enjoy right off the bat. The firmware definitely opens the door on these machines. It makes them so much more capable there's so many more things you can do and hone in uh, right here from this firmware. Not only personalization, but just customization in general of the machine. It is definitely a major upgrade if you ask me. Really excited to see how VoxLab uh, fixes the issue with their firmware. It de definitely gives them the opportunity to add a little bit more features uh, uh, you know, to their um, firmware as well. I did always like how simplified and clean uh, their firmware was, but this is just a whole nother level, especially because I can go back and tweak the colors and really make it my own, which is something I've always personally been interested in. 
So, so far on this machine, I just did the mesh bed leveling. And as soon as I hit print, the first layer is absolutely perfect. So definitely a big fan uh, of bed mesh leveling, like I've mentioned previously in some of my other videos. But there you go, guys. Check the description for the link to the other mount. Uh, let me know if you have any related questions, and I'll be happy to try to answer them. Uh, you can also hop into the Discord and talk amongst uh, other with other people, like-minded people, and uh, share your prints and troubleshoot machines if that's something that you need help with. All right, so I think that's all for me. I'll see you guys in the comments below. Later.